Hello my friends, John LaRuffa here with another Straight Up Solo, and in this episode, we're going to take a look at Bullet Heart. At least that's how I say it. Um, it's Bullet with a Blue Heart back on the back of it. This is a multiplayer game, has a solo mode, has uh, three different modes to play. I'm going to be focusing on the solo mode where you're fighting the bosses and explain to you how that plays, and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I like and don't like, and we'll see if it's something that you might want to put in your collection. All right, let's get started. Okay, everyone, as usual, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so I can build up my fan base. So this is what the game looks like when you set it up in a solo mode versus the boss, all right? So your player stuff is over here, and the boss is over here, right here. Now, what you begin the game with is drawing 10 of these tiles, and I put the little... Um, I put the little tile protectors on there. They don't come with the game, but they're actually really cheap to buy if you are so interested. You're going to buy 10 of these bullet tiles. Uh, sorry. Put 10 of these bullet tiles into your draw bag, okay? Let's do that right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You're not really going to look at them, but then you're going to give it a shake. And then the way the game works is you are going to go, on your turn, you're going to do one of really a couple things. You can draw a tile out and when you draw a tile out you'll see what kind it is and you'll put it on the board depending on the number and the color okay and so this one in this case is a uh, pink one so I look at the pink column over here and I put it there all right and I'm actually going to pick this up so you can see a little bit closer to the action here so again that was pink one and it went right there over here in that spot all right now, um, this particular person that I'm playing with has a special ability, uh, they all do, um, and this special ability basically has me put one wild tile out here, a wild bullet out here to be able to use in patterns throughout the game, and once it's used, it goes to a different spot so I can move it around. Basically, what you're trying to do is you're trying to defeat the boss by breaking all of these shields before you take four hits. Now, once you've taken four hits, you immediately lose the game. Once this boss takes the, uh, or you break the boss's fifth shield here, um, then and they, they vary depending on the boss, then you win the game. The way that you do that is you have to transfer bullets from your uh, crosshair sights to the boss by use of these pattern cards right here. And each of the pattern cards will have different things on them. So if they have this circle right here, that means that the empty circle indicates you need to have something there. You need to have a bullet there in your pattern. If they have a number, it indicates it needs to be a number three. And if it has a star, it's saying that you're going to remove any bullets that are up in this, uh, in this pattern right here, and you're going to put them in the incoming section of the boss. Okay, so for instance, I'm going to be trying during this round to be making these kind of patterns, either maybe this cross here or this one where I have a blue one on the top and two other ones below it, um, to try to transfer these three bullets that would be below that or these around the cross or these over top to this boss tile. And you can over damage them, so to speak. The, uh, the, in, the Sometimes the bosses do not allow damage to carry over. In this case, this one does. Um, and then basically what you do is you go through these steps and you'll crack the shields and see if you can beat them before it's too late. The other thing that you can do on your turn, besides drawing out of the bag, is that you can use any of these abilities that cost energy. So in this case, I could spend one energy and I could move a bullet, <clears throat> excuse me, as far as possible orthogonally until it hits another bullet or sight edge. Or I could do this where I use two energy and I draw a new pattern, which is right here. You'll always start the round with a certain number of patterns, depending on your hand size, usually three, but you can add more to them. And when you use them, you're going to discard the pattern in your discard pile, so it's going to be gone until you were, would uh, shuffle this, and usually that doesn't happen. Usually you end up winning or losing before that happens. But, you know, there can be different strategies, and, and maybe you do shuffle. Um, and here you can move this to an empty space. Here you can clear a bullet orthogonally adjacent to uh, um, to Mariel. Now, if you do that, then when you clear a bullet, that goes to the incoming area over here. So that could be kind of helpful. And you've noticed that with those little stars around 
uh, Marielle. It says clear a bullet. I'm guessing it's not multiple bullets. I'd have to look at the FAQ. What happens, though, is that if you are filling these up and um, you end up basically bumping out into this spot and going down here, you will automatically take a hit. And if you take four hits, you'll die. So let me show you quickly um, as you now I'll put this back in the stand and I'll show you kind of how that round is going to go. Actually, you know what? I'll just do it like this. So on my turn, I'm going to keep drawing. I started with 10. So now I've drew, drew, uh, drew this two. So I count one, two. I have to place it there. And I don't have a pattern yet, so I'm going to keep drawing. And now I have this one star. Now the star, once I clear the stars, I will actually gain back, for every star, you gain back one energy. So that can help. And uh, gaining back those energies or action points, as they're called, um, is a good way to trigger more combos and move things around. Okay. So now I have, all right, here's another star. Now notice that the first spot is taken, so I have to go to the first empty spot. Okay, so I'm not really developing quite the pattern that I need to thus far. So I'm still drawing. This is a three, so it's going to go one, two, three. Okay. And I'll still draw here. Here is a three. One, two, three. Okay, so now I've got some things going on here. Um, do I have anything I'd want to turn into a pattern? Well, I can. Let me show you how I'm going to do this. So this isn't necessarily going to be the most effective move, but it's going to demonstrate the gameplay. So I want to do this uh, paper craft claymore here. I need to have a three in the middle, something on the left, something on the right, and then three things on top to maximize my effect. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spend a power. Uh, let's see. Let's spend a power here to move this bullet all the way. Let's move her over one. And I'll show you, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna spend another one to move her over one again. Spend another one to move her over here. Then I'm gonna spend one up here to move this down one. And so now it's setting me up. I'm gonna see if I can draw some more green or yellow and maybe get lucky without having to spend any more power. Cause I spent a lot of power to kind of configure all of that. All right, so now what do we get? Well, blue three, that's not lucky. One, two, three. All right, let's see if we can get it again. We're running out of stuff here. Four red, that's not behaving. And do I have any more left in my bag? I've got a couple. Come on, three red. One, two, three. Well, that's unfortunate. This isn't going well. All right, and the last one, Blue four, dang, one, two, three, four. So that really didn't go well at all, but I'm just gonna make up the difference because at the end of every round, I'm gonna refill my energy anyway. So I'm gonna do this one here where I wanna move this down. So I'll spend that, it'll slide over, and then I'll spend this one, it'll slide over. So now I have spent almost all my energy, but I've made my pattern. And again, I had to have a three in the middle, two things on the outside, and I can transfer three bullets. So I'm gonna execute that pattern, I'm gonna discard it, then I'm going to take these three that were stars and put them in the incoming. Those will count as hits when I try to break the shield. Notice, though, these did not go anywhere. So I only discarded the stars, okay? Now, I'm out of bullets, and if I wanted to, um, I could... Let's see if I actually transferred. Okay, so I did get a star over here, so I'm going to get one energy back. And with that extra energy, do I have anything in two energy in these patterns that could help me? It does not look like I do. So, because I can't really match any patterns or get anything else going, I'm pretty much going to end up stopping. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Do, 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 do. Okay, so... <clears throat> um, let's see. So that's going to be the end of my turn. So since I'm done, now I go through the steps of the boss. So the boss, first things first, is we see... Um, what, let me see. So I'm going to pull out this little handy-dandy uh, sheet here. Let me just get that out so you can kind of see how the steps go. Just one second. All right, so we've already done the action phase. We've placed bullets. We've used actions. We've used patterns, and we use the power-ups. The power-ups don't really come into play. Um, those See, these are actually called the actions, whereas the power-ups are special things that actually you don't see in a solo game versus the boss. They're kind of things that are similar to this, um, and that's what these little empty spaces do. So end phase, we uh, so in the following order, we take a power up, but we don't because I just said we don't use those in solo play. We draw up to the hand size and then we put um, intensity bullets from the center into the current. Now, 
the intensity bullet center and current thing, that's all multiplayer. So that doesn't happen. But we do draw up to our hand size. We are going to do that. Now we go to the uh, cleanup phase. And it says in the following order, you got to put up new power-ups if we need to. But we said we aren't doing that. There is no intensity because that has to do with the multiplayer. Um, basically, the only thing we do here in this phase is set this AP back to max. Okay, now we go to the boss round, and this is the important part for our solo game here. So the boss activates its patterns. Now, the pattern said here, unless I have this pattern on my board, which I do not, then this bad thing happens to me. So in this case, I have to flip all blue bullets in your sight face down. Now, why is that bad? That's bad because sometimes bullets need to be certain colors, and that's important. Also, because once I crack this first shield, it's going to say, face down bullets hit you. And when that happens, I'm going to take a bunch of hits if I don't get rid of these. So that's really a problem, and I don't want that to happen. Now this pattern is done, so I put it over here into the discard. And I'll have a new pattern going into the next turn. And then the next turn, I want to have this pattern happen. Otherwise, I'm going to have to flip all pink bullets in my sight face down. Then, after I do that, I check to see if I have five, because I'm playing a one-player game, tokens to break a shield. Well, I don't. I only have three. So those sit there, and I don't break any shields. And then finally, um, I uh, basically will um, draw that card right here, and then, and then the, I draw back up to my intensity level. In this case, it's 12. But as you reveal these things, sometimes it can change. As you see, as the boss gets uh, lower and lower on health, you have to put more and more bullets in your bag. So I add 12 more bags now, or 12 more bullets to my bag from the center. Okay, and that basically will be how you do a full round. So what ends up happening is the rounds are quite quick. They're probably two minutes long. And as you keep bullets on here, things get kind of congested. And you are trying to make these patterns, trying to move bullets here to hit the, the, the boss. But at the same time, you know, you're going to have things that don't work out. Um, you have patterns, bullets kind of going in spots you don't want them to. You're trying to move them around. It's a very, very crunchy tactical puzzle to try to beat this boss all in about 10 to 15 minutes tops. So now that you've seen uh, kind of like one round in play, let me go ahead and tell you what I think about the game. Okay, so that gave you an idea of what a full round looks like uh, in this game. Now, what do I like about it? First of all, this is a great, great tactical puzzle game. Plain and simple, it's fun to play. It's got a lot of differences when you look at, you have, um, you know, eight different bosses or so in the game, give or take. I think it's eight. And, you know, the each character you play, you can play as that person or you flip them over and they become the boss. And their similarities are there between the boss side and the player and character side. So if one has a special ability like to flip notes, for instance, that one that the boss was there... That ability has changed when you play that character to allow you to flip notes for other reasons. Uh, I find that the game is extremely fast. You're talking about a 10-minute session here, and it takes about two minutes to set up. So it's not like you feel like, oh, i got to set this big thing up and do all this stuff, and then the game's over like that. No, no, no. It's very quick to set up, and it's also very quick to play. And the, um, you know, the specific patterns that you do where you're... You know, drawing out of the bag or activating abilities or pausing for a second thinking about is now the right time to try to move things around to get the pattern or should I keep drawing and see if I get lucky so I have to spend some of my energy. All those are really good choices. The other thing is is that each boss has a specific strength or the way they'll attack you and so some of the characters that you'll play may be better against some of the other bosses or worse depending on what you are you know going against. So that provides kind of a little bit of a meta game outside the game to say okay well if I want to play and fight this particular boss, which of these characters is probably the easiest, or maybe I want to go the other way, the most challenging to win with. So there's a lot of different combinations you can put together, which I think breathes a ton of life into what is, in a lot of ways, a pretty simple game. Now, when you play it multiplayer, which I haven't, they've got d d all these other different modes where you're basically fighting and transferring bullets to other players in a kind of survival game, but you can also play co-op against the bosses just like this. Although I find that I, I don't feel like I'm missing anything just by playing against the boss and uh, trying to defeat them. So I, I think that that's really, really very well done. They could have just done the game in a multiplayer session and not made a way to have the boss strike back, and that would have been a, a 
terribly disappointed because this is a fantastic solo game, in my opinion. Now, the other thing about it is, is that rules-wise, when you're reading through the rules, it can seem like there's, there's a little more complexity than there actually is. They do a good job explaining the different game modes, and if anything... It's just that because it's all together in one thing, sometimes these phases don't apply to those phases. And so, like, even when I was getting a little tripped up just reading that uh, card again, it's been a little bit since I've played it, um, it's just because it was all smashed into one card. And hopefully, I mean, it, it would have been more convenient, I guess, if they just had a single card for the multiplayer, a single for the solo, a single for the co-op or something like that. That's a minor quibble because, really, the game is pretty simple. You pull out the, the bullet... You figure out where it goes. You hope you get your patterns. You move things around depending on the different powers that uh, the characters have. And again, each character has different move-around powers also. It's not just that one special ability. It can be lots of different things. So there's just a ton of variety there. I really enjoy this game. The people who won't like the game, if you want a deep strategic experience, besides the strategy of figuring out which characters you want to pay, you know, put against another, it's all tactical. So you're not going to get that. You are going to get a very fun, very tactical puzzle that you'll probably play, you know, two, maybe even three times when you sit down. A lot of times when I play it, I end up playing two sessions because they're that fast. And I, you know, I got crushed by the boss and now I want to try again. And I've really, <laughs> in, you know, nine playthroughs, I've only beaten the boss once. And I don't remember which one it was. Um, but I, I, I beat the boss and was like, oh my gosh, finally. I feel able to pull it off. And it doesn't feel like it's impossible, so to speak. It always feels like it's within grasp, but sometimes things just don't go well or you push the envelope too much or you don't do, you know, you don't take enough risks um, in other sides and you just get uh, get trounced. And I've had some pretty close games too. So there's a lot of variety here. I uh, think it's worth your time to look at this if you like small tactical puzzles that you can set up quickly and are, you know, win or lose. There's no scoring. You either win or you lose. So you're not going to have to worry about a score here um, from a beat-your-own-score perspective. So people who, you know, don't want that, you're not going to get that. It's either you do or you don't. Um, so I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's worth checking out. Um, and I was extremely surprised to see that I appreciated it and enjoyed it so much because I like heavy games, right? I mean, you look at behind me, you can probably spot a lot of heavy games. And this one isn't particularly heavy, but it is a lot of fun. And it's a great brain burner of a puzzle trying to kind of figure out how I can take apart that boss's strategy and, uh, you know, block their patterns or, I guess, mimic their patterns so I don't have the bad stuff happen, but at the same time pull off my patterns so I can transfer bullets. So hopefully this was informative to you. And, uh, again, thank you very much for watching. Hope whatever you play in the future, you really enjoy it. Take it easy, everybody.